they're still talking. Oh, these brass monkeys up here. I'm gonna do with some tea as well. So could we. Our man's got it. Fred, stay with the car. Tessa, we'll take him. You never know what they'll turn out to be, do you? And the courier? Fred picked him up before he checked in at the airport. Good. Rather clever of them, disguising their man like that, I thought. Mm, surprised us, I can tell you. So, that just leaves one more of their people on the loose. Yes. It won't be anybody important. We were hoping to get some information out of the interrogation that would lead us to him. Or her. Yes. So, when do I get the report? Report? We've only just got back. Anyway, Fred's on it. You haven't got a cup of tea, have you? We might be able to arrange something. But I thought on surveillance all you did was drink tea. We're not the police, you know. You can't send for your solicitor here. Can't be sprung. Your friends can't get you out. They couldn't even find out where you are. Your MP. Haven't got one! If you did. Your MP couldn't even find out where you are. You vanished. Off the face of the earth you are. So, why don't you tell us where we can find your contact man? Wasting your breath. Oh, I see. It's the old double act. Is it? You're the nasty one, and she's the nice one. No, I was the nice one. Yes, yes, of course. How are you, darling? What are you doing here? I haven't got anywhere else to go. You've been drinking? Yes, I have been. Uh, drowning the old sorrows a bit, I'm afraid. You lisp it up? Yep. And she's just thrown you out? No, no, that was last year. Well, what are you doing here tonight? Well, I, I, I told you, I, I don't have anywhere else to go. Look, is there any chance of my coming in for a bit? One cup of coffee and then you go, right? Well, one drink, perhaps? I wouldn't have thought you had any more drinks. I mean, she didn't marry me for my money, did she? So why did she expect me to have any? No, the trouble is that she knew that I could have been earning more than I have been. So why didn't you earn more? Because money isn't everything. That's what my old grandfather used to say, and by God, he was right. And on the other hand, now you've ended up with no money and no wife. But I've still got my work. Or at least I, I did have until the fire. I mean, not that I blame Liz for the fire. Liz started a fire? No, 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 no. No, I don't know how it started. Did this fire lost you your job? No. Look, Alan, let's get back to a few basic facts. The last time I heard about you, you were designing yachts for the filthy rich. You still doing that? Mm -hmm. I am one of the short, fat ships school. What? Well, you read the papers, the controversy about the new design for a frigate. Look, during the Falklands, we lost a lot of frigates, so we have to replace them. Incidentally, I got out of yachts years ago. Warships are so much more interesting. So what we're talking about here is the biggest new order for warships for, for years. So it's really important. 
How many important for this country, I mean? I think I know what you're saying. You know, nobody's really taken a new look at frigate design since Watt designed the steam engine. Yes, well, the traditional ones are long and thin, and you're suggesting... Yes, now I'm coming to that. The first thing that I did was to take a radical new look at the whole layout. And I saw immediately that they'd been doing it wrong for years. Yes, everybody else was wrong and you were right. Well, yes. Well, one of them, anyway. Now, the trouble is, the Admiralty... Well, I mean, you know the type. I mean, this is the way we've always done it. Oh, boy. And this is the way we always will. I mean, I've made my mind up, so don't confuse me with facts. Right? <laughs> they wanted the traditional long, thin ships, and you were suggesting a radical new design, short, fat ones. Yes, plus some pretty revolutionary innovations of my own. I mean, more stability. Not just to give the sailors a better ride, but to provide a better platform and street cheaper to build. Well, then why didn't they build them? I told you. They've got closed minds. You mean they ignored all your research? Ah, well, there wasn't actually um, a great deal of uh, research. Uh, I mean, not in the beginning. It was just a theory. No, it was not just a theory. It was a very well-worked-out concept that could have been tested for next to nothing. So, when the bastards wouldn't give me any money, I decided to do it myself. Oh, so that's why you haven't been earning so much as you could have been. Yes. All my savings, weekends, evenings, I put everything into it. I even built and tested scale models. Liz couldn't take it. I mean, not that I blame her. Poor darling. Still, it would have been nice to have a bit of marital support, you know? So what's this fire? Mm, happened this afternoon. The whole bloody house went up. The whole house? There's all my research, drawings, models, videotapes, the latest sea trials, the lot. <laughs> Just three years' work. Insurance? No, not, not for the work stuff, no. How far did you get? I cracked it. I mean, I knew I was right, right from the start. I just needed two more weeks to modify my latest design and then I could have gone out and sold it to anyone. I mean, to the Russians, if need be. I mean, not that I would have done. I mean, bloody hell. Oh. It's all been a bit of a heartbreaker, actually. But, Alan, you've got the principles. You can do the work all over again, can't you? But who will pay for it? I mean, I've lost everything. I don't even have a spare pair of socks. Actually, uh, Maggie, I wonder... Um, I couldn't stay here tonight, could I? Well, I don't think that's a very good idea, Alan. I think we'll have to find somewhere else for you. Right. Well, uh, how about that cup of coffee? I thought you had a drink instead. Hmm. Uh, right, then. One coffee for the road. You do have a car? Oh, yes. Right. Stay the night. I think there's something going on between these two. I hardly think that's relevant. Well, it might be. We still don't know who she is or what she knows. We're working. He's had trouble with his car this morning. It wouldn't start. Hang on, there's a car arriving there. Get the number. If it's a friend of hers, it might be useful to know who owns it. Right.
hello. Hello. You've left the front door open. I know. It's the battery, I expect. I've got my chap coming round as it... Oh, good morning. Good morning. This is Mr. Moss. Miss Smith. Call me Alan. Tom Fred. <clears throat> my car wouldn't start. Do you mind giving me a lift? To the station. Of course. You know, Maggie, that was some of the nicest bacon and eggs I've had for a long time. I've forgotten the joys of a cooked breakfast. Cooked breakfast, did you? Yes. Well, uh, thanks for the lift. Um, Fred. Oh, Fred. Fred, yes. Fred, of course. Uh, Maggie. Thanks for everything. Bye, Alan. We'll see you tonight. What? Friend of yours? That's all he is. Back of the house now. It's just poking through everything. I've checked that car number. It's an official car. Is it, by God? His girlfriend's in the security services. You said he had some car trouble. Perhaps he might have some. It's a bit obvious. Now leave it to me, I'll think of something. I'm always surprised that they don't get the feeling they're being watched. Why should they? Well, haven't you ever had that feeling that somebody's watching you and you turn around and there was? Yeah, but not with people in a van the other side of the road. <laughs> what made you suddenly think of that? When I went to pick up Maggie this morning, there was a car behind us all the way to the station where we dropped her friend off. But you didn't see it after that? No, probably was nothing. Probably not. What's he like? Who, Maggie's boyfriend. Is he a boyfriend? <laughs> well, he stayed the night and she cooked him breakfast. <laughs> well, he's 40, scruffy. I noticed his shoes were dirty. And his... He's not a suspect, Fred. Hmm. What's the news? It's the alternator. Needs a new one, I'm afraid. Hmm. How long will that take? Oh, hello, Maggie. Hello. Well, I can get hold of one in the morning. Bring it over, fit it here. Be ready by lunchtime. Saturday, of course. Have to charge a bit extra. Do it. Yes, uh, as soon as possible, please, Colin. Right. I'm going back to the garage. I'll give you a lift, shall I? No, I'm, I'm fine here. Thank you very much. What makes you think that? Oh, I've, um, I've got a bit of a surprise for you, actually. Have you? Yes, I, I think my behaviour last night, you know, left a bit to be desired. I mean, just sort of dumping myself on the doorstep like that. So, um, to make up for it, I borrowed this smashing boat and I'm going to take you sailing tomorrow. Oh, that, that's very sweet of you, Alan. No, I'm not going to take no for an answer. It's Saturday, you're not working, and the fresh air will do you good. No, I'm not working, uh, but I've made arrangements to go out with Fred tomorrow and the other girl I work with, Tessa. Well, that's great. Well, there's plenty of room. They'll love it. I don't even know if they like sailing. In fact, now I come to think of it, I know that Tessa gets seasick. Well, I'd love to go sailing. Yeah, me too. Well, terrific. I'll make some sandwiches. No, 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 I'll go. Oh, right. She's got some white bread. Would you like fish paste? Oh, good much.
Trying to get back, I think. Hard to pull, Fred. Alan is not doing anything. We'll probably need some more help. Yeah. Bloody hell. How long have we got? Well, if we take down all the sails and let it drift with this wind strength, let's say about 15 minutes. Banded ship? No way. I promised my friend that no harm will come to this boat, and it's not going to. Tessa, roll up the head saw. Fred and Maggie, drop the main saw. I'll try and sort this thing out. It looks like we lost all the hydraulic fluid from the steering system. What now? Well, I just have to rig something up. Luckily, my friend always keeps one of these on board. It's a French idea, one of their better ones. Is that going to work? It'll have to. All yachts pull to one side under power. Maggie, you're in charge of the engine. You'll have to increase and decrease the revs, and by balancing that with the reduced sail from this so-called rudder will be okay if the wind doesn't get up. often very rarely don't boats have an mot or something no and if they did that one wouldn't have had one by now it's only a year old how can the steering go on a boat that's only a year old it's just one of those things that's the trouble with hydraulic steering losing all the fluid Commander Hutchins apologised for giving you away to Mrs. Forbes. Mrs. Forbes, so good of you to come and see me. Uh, do sit down. Some tea? Thank you. Sir. I'm sure you have as many demands on your time as I have on mine, so I'll come straight to the point. Alan Moss. Alan Moss? Yes. It's, uh been brought to our attention that he's been uh, staying with you. That's not exactly a naval concern, is it, Commander? And may I ask how you know that Mr. Moss is staying with me? Of course. But I must ask you to treat the whole matter as one of national security. I'm clear to the very highest level. I know. We checked. Otherwise, this conversation couldn't take place. Did you take milk? Um... Yes, no sugar. The thing is, moss is very important to us. We need him for some vital design work. But we're worried that he may be having some kind of nervous breakdown. Some time ago, he got a bee in his bonnet about a particular design matter. Short fat as opposed to long thin frigates. Precisely. Personally, I thought that moss was right. Some very innovative ideas. But although I gave him all the support I could, we were overruled. He, he took it very badly. Uh, his wife had left him, and from then on, things went from bad to worse. His house burnt down with the loss of all his designs and research. And then yesterday, he seemed to get himself into some very serious trouble while sailing a yacht belonging to one of my colleagues. A yacht that he'd borrowed without the owner's permission, he since confessed. Oh, so that's how you know what he's been up to. Precisely. He told my colleague what had been happening to him. And I must say straight away that uh, he uh, suggested nothing of an improper nature had occurred between the two of you. But we wanted to ask you about his mental state. Can we rely on him? Or should we count him out of our future design plans? All right. For what it's worth, I think he's just going through a bad patch. I don't think he's having a mental breakdown. In fact, plunging back to work could be the best thing for him. And do you think he's given up all idea of his own frigate design? 
Oh, not for a moment. But I think it would be less important to him if he was deeply involved with something else. Yes, that's good sense. Very helpful. I must thank you again for coming along, Mrs. Forbes. As you know what happened yesterday, do you think there's any possibility that it could have been deliberately arranged? Oh, highly unlikely. Though not impossible. The question is, why would anyone want to harm Moss? He doesn't even have any current classified information. Well, it's just a thought. We must be vigilant. Perhaps a thorough examination of the boat out of the water would be advisable. Delighted to have met you, Mrs. Forbes. Perhaps we could have dinner sometime. You've got the number. Indeed. Something urgent came up in the office, so she asked me to come instead. Is Alan shacking up with Maggie? No. Well, of course not. Not that it matters to me, of course, but he did call me from her place the other day. I think he's been staying there. Really? Is this an official interview? Or so me. Sort of, yes. Is Alan in trouble? Could be. Cagey, aren't you? Just professional. I hope. May I ask if his work had anything to do with why the two of you parted? I could just say yes. But how do you separate a man like Alan from his work? He became obsessed with it. When the designs were turned down? Yes. I wanted more from life than living in an unfinished house and spending my weekends, well, alone. We became very lonely living with Alan. And we became very poor, too. I didn't like that. And as you can see, I've been lucky enough to change it. Did his colleagues support him? No. With one exception. There was a commander, Hutchins, he used to talk about a lot. But otherwise, I think Alan is a bit of a loner. I really can't even believe that he misses me. Well, I wouldn't know about that. I'm still very fond of Alan, you know. He's crazy, but he gets under your skin. It's hard to imagine someone as organized as Maggie getting on with him. Evening, Maggie. What the hell are you doing? I'm doing Chinese stir-fried vegetables, one of my specialities. I mean, what the hell are you doing in my kitchen? I told you, Chinese. Oh, I see what you mean, yes. Well, I thought you might like someone to cook you dinner after a hard day at the police station or wherever you work. You're going to meet here at 8 o'clock. That's in half an hour's time. Yes, I know, I know. But I got here a bit earlier, so I thought I'd surprise you with a little of the old home cooking. Well, you certainly surprised me by breaking into my house. Yes, I was amazed you didn't have better locks. You know, in your line of business, any serious breaker and enterer would have been in here like a flash. God, I need a drink. Oh, Beaujolais, coming up. What did your friend say about the damage to his boat? Oh, he's uh, not a real friend. He's someone I met sailing. He's in France, so he doesn't know about it yet. But he did know that we were using the boat. Oh, of course, yes. Alan, when you presented your designs to the Admiralty, was everybody against them? Yes, more or less. The only one with any sense, chap called Hutchins. He was just, you know, voted down. Are you going to do more work for them? Oh, yes, yes. I need the money for my experiments. When all's said and done, it's better than designing floating gin palaces. Ah, I hear the old chef calling for advice from the kitchen. I'll be serving up soon. I'll go and get changed.
I just don't know what to say, Maggie. I mean, I just messed the place up, haven't I? It's all right, Alan, really. But it isn't, is it? I mean, I don't know how you both can take it so calmly. These things happen. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, like the house and, uh, and the boat. I'm bloody jinxed. That's what I am, just bloody jinxed. Alan, you're not. Huh. Then what am I? Well, you're certainly unlucky. <laughs> unlucky? <laughs> Well, the only thing I can say in my own defence is that I had the sense to keep the old extinguisher in the car. Uh, Alan, I wonder if you would excuse us for a minute. I came to report something to Maggie and I think I should do it straight away. Oh, well, I could always make some more coffee. That is if the electric kettle still works. Here a minute. Yeah, I found it in before I came into the house. Still? Naturally. I didn't even really see him. Nobody can be this accident prone. Of course, it could be someone trying to get at you. Yes, well, there's one sure way to check that out. The fire at Alan's house started before I came on the scene. Let's start by finding out if that was an accident. Results that look like accidents aren't that easy. This could get urgent. You've got one more crack at it. Then we abandon the accident theory. I'm still not convinced this thing with Alan Moss is really for us. Nigel, somebody blew up my kitchen. You don't know that yet, do you? You don't know how the fire started at Moss's house or if that boat was sabotaged. Ah, now you're talking. What do you mean? Well, you're saying that those three things need investigating. No, I'm not. What I am saying is I can't make a decision until I know more about those events. So we can check on those things and then you'll make a decision. All right. But you'd better be quick. I'll get back to you tomorrow. It looks as if it started down here. Oh, don't come too close. Oh, it doesn't look too safe under there. It's safe enough for you, it's safe enough for me. Well, you're being warned. Quite. Started there, and then burned its way up through there. Could those wires have started it? On the face of it, yes. Meaning? Well, I'll have to take them to the lab to be sure. See, a really clever arsonist always finds a place like that. Old wires, all old worn-out covers, and sets his fire there. Chances are he gets away with it, too. Unless it's a death or something suspicious, like a big insurance claim. How long will it take for you to get the results? I'll give you the results tomorrow. You were lucky, then? Or unlucky for such a thing to happen to a new boat. Oh, mind you, I don't know why she's been holed out. Well, more extra work for me to do, that is. Of course I saw the fire, dear. Everybody round here did. It was the biggest excitement we've had in years. And wasn't the man lucky to get all those things out just before? You saw the man take his things out? <laughs> when you get to my age, dear, you'll know there's not a lot to do. So, I make myself a nice cup of tea, and I sit in the front window and see what I can see. You know Mr. Moss, do you? Who's Mr. Moss? The man who lives over there. Oh, no, I don't know him. But I saw the man who took all the things away, and it wasn't the one who lives there. What sort of things were they taking away? Oh, I don't know, dear. A couple of small packing cases, a few cardboard boxes, that sort of thing. And he put them all in a little van. Now, that's really very interesting. Can you tell me what colour the van was? Oh, yes. What do you want to look underneath it for? I mean, it's not a car, is it? Still, I've had a look at the hull and the steering gear, like they told me to, but... She's in great shape, as she always is. Have the hydraulics been repaired? 
Oh, yes, that was just a loose bleed valve, that was. Could someone have done it deliberately, right here in the marina, before we'd set off? Well, loosen the valves? Uh, I suppose so. Who'd want to do a thing like that? Quite right dangerous thing to do, that would. You know, I often think that the bumblers of this world, like Moss, are utterly ruthless. They apparently blunder through life whilst getting exactly what they want. Whereas you or I would be told to get lost in no uncertain manner. Yes, I'm sure you're right. Still, it's a hard idea to get hold of. The ruthless blunder. Taking the thought a little further, I'm surprised that he didn't... Proposition me? Precisely. It's not what he's got on his mind. Sharing a house with you, Maggie. Difficult not to imagine one's mind straying in that direction. Of course, he didn't get any encouragement. Oh, even the boldest of us could use a little of that. You'll be glad to hear that he's starting on our new project on Monday. I had a word with him as a result of what you told us, and I have every confidence that he'll turn out to be perfectly all right. Oh, I hope so. Do you like the theatre? Yes, I do. Oh, dear. I think I've just run out of time. So I see. Well, you run along. I'll give you a call, if I may. Yes, please do. And who is that? Commander Neville Hutchins, Abbey Good luck, madam. It was business. What did you find out? Well, the damage to the boat doesn't point in any conclusive direction. I've had a bit more luck. It's possible, and we'll know tomorrow, that the fire at Allen's house was deliberately started. But much more than that, a woman who lives opposite said that she saw someone removing cases and cardboard boxes from the house shortly before the fire. Alan's research. That's what I thought. And what about your kitchen? Inconclusive. Like the boat. A loose gas union. Could have been accidental or somebody could have loosened it. Now, we're dealing with somebody pretty clever here. We've got to be pretty clever ourselves. Someone's trying to kill me. I didn't think I was capable of arousing such passion. There's nothing passionate about it. In fact, it's totally cold-blooded. But, I mean, why? I haven't done anything to anyone. Well, except perhaps annoying a few old toads at the Admiralty. I don't think it's really you they're trying to kill off. It's your work. Hmm? Whatever the Admiralty may say, I think there's somebody there that thinks your designs are so valuable that they want to make sure you stop doing any more work on them. But, I mean, who's they? That's what I want to find out. With your help. Just one drink at the Wheat Chief. One drink at the Wheat Chief. Well, give me a kiss then, make you look real. <clears throat> you know, I got quite fond of you in the last few days. This is all in the line of duty, Alan. <clears throat>
I don't think he deliberately gave you the slip. No, I was just cruising around. I was very careless. But he's not exactly going to get away from us, is he? No, not at all. From Monday, we'll know where he is every day and all day. Does he drive to work? Yes. Could be useful. Yes. Well, good fishing. Good hunting. I was double clever, you sussing Hutchins. How did you find out about him? I told you, it was a business dinner. We're going to have to keep our eye on those two. Not that they're going to get up to much. Fred, I want you to keep after Hutchins. Tessa, you tail the other man. Get some photos, see if you can find out who he is. And you? I'm going to do some political lobbying. Before we go into any favors you want me to do for you, I want to hear the results of your checking into Moss's little run of bad luck. We're past that point now. You may be. I am not. None of the accidents can be definitely identified as a setup. There we are. But there is evidence to suggest that before the fire at Moss's house, somebody removed all his designs and experiments. And there has been somebody on surveillance at my house. We followed him and he had a covert meeting with a commander who claimed to be Moss's biggest fan at the Admiralty. There is nothing there, Maggie. You can't prove that the accidents were not accidental. And you're obviously not 100% sure that the fire started at Moss's house was a cover-up for the theft of the designs. And how do you know that your house wasn't being kept under surveillance by naval intelligence because they wanted to know what friend Moss was up to? I just don't believe it. It's too big a chain of coincidences. Further, I bet the man you followed was watching Moss and not your house. Am I correct? Yes. That would explain a naval commander meeting him, wouldn't it? Well, there could be a much more sinister explanation. Now, one simple piece of investigation can sort all this out. I'd have to clear that with naval intelligence. Well, that would destroy the whole point of the exercise. If I don't, can you imagine the interdepartmental hassle I'd get? Well, isn't that what your job's all about, Nigel? Smoothing over the cracks between departments? When I want a lesson from you on my job definition, I'll ask for it. All I'm trying to say is that I know that this could mean trouble for you. If I didn't believe it was something really serious, I wouldn't be asking you. It had better be serious. I'll have to use up a valuable favor for this. I do understand that even in speaking off the record like this, I do have to be extremely circumspect. And merely coming here today could be misconstrued in certain quarters. Of course. And the last thing we would want is to place you in an ambiguous position. What we need to know is, in fact, very simple. In a less delicate situation, we could even have talked to you on the phone. Uh, it's more a matter of personalities than anything which could be interpreted as classified material. And that's a judgment I should have to make myself. Naturally. It's to do with the general question of frigate design. That's a rather touchy area in itself. I need to ask you about some of the internal discussions that went on when Alan Moss proposed his own new designs. Really, Nigel, this is exactly the sort of thing I can't make a comment on. Hear her out, Giles. And I don't think you'll have a problem. We need to know who opposed those designs and who supported them. To be specific, did Commander Hutchins back Moss's theories? May I ask to what use this information is to be put? It is nothing to do with a lobby representing the various designs. It is part of an investigation into a serious security leak. Very well. Hutchins was the most vehement opponent of Moss's proposals.
Anything interesting? Commander came straight home. He looked quite good in his pinstripe suit. Is he married? Divorced. How'd he check out? Straight? On paper, impeccable family, brilliant career. It's too good to be true. Mm. That's what I think. Anyway, keep after him. Lose it. Of course not. He's here. Where? Watching this place. As soon as I saw him heading this way, I knew it'd be safe to leave him alone for a while. And if he sees me coming and going in and out of here, it won't occur to him that I'm following him. So how do you know he isn't aiming a rocket launcher at us right now? Because we know it's Alan he's after. Anyway, since he tried to make all his other efforts look like accidents, he's hardly going to use a rocket launcher on this house. Very good. Right. What did he do all day? Nothing much. Went back to the place he lives. Unfurnished, anonymous flat. Um, went to the laundrette, had a hamburger and that's it. Well, he obviously isn't going to do anything else until he catches up with Alan again. We're going to have to exploit that somehow. I can't imagine what you think you'd find here. I'm not quite sure myself. I know you're a very careful sort of man, but anybody can make a mistake. I presume you've already found out something, or you wouldn't be doing anything as clumsy as this. I know you're on the other side. I'm just not quite sure which other side. And there's nothing in this flat to tell you. Well, one way or the other, we'll find out. I don't think so. In any case, I think your efforts to stop this country having the benefit of Alan Moss's research is at an end. The whole question of frigate design is going to be reopened. And without you there to sabotage the investigation this time, I think the Admiralty will see that 
Alan has come up with a great breakthrough. If I were you, I wouldn't bank on moss lasting the whole of today. Any more, I'm sorry to say, than you will yourself, my dear. He was really good looking, I thought. Yes, he was. Ta-da! Well, I never thought I'd see this again. This is some um, Fatty Mark II, I call this. Well, I don't know how I'm going to say thank you. Except, actually, I do. I've set up something really special. And uh, you're included this time, Nigel. Uh, thank you. Yes. Skydiving. Next weekend. I've borrowed the plane and the parachute, and I've made all the arrangements of the loft. I'm going on the plane, of course. Well, I'd love to, but uh, I promised that I've got this 